They are big favorites at SoFi this weekend. Well, Devo Samuel, he's going to miss the game with a calf strain. But he went on a podcast this week and was talking about the team's Super Bowl window. See, the now or never, like, right. that's how I kind of look at it. Like, with, with the guys that we have, like, we didn't, like, I'd have been a part of, you know, the, the best team in the NFL for the past going on six years. Yeah. And so, like, we always there. Like, we, we, we got to get it done. No, they had the best roster for six years. They have the best team. That's different. Roster and team are do different things. I think they went to five NFC, four, four NFC championship games in the last five years. Yeah, well, what's the trophy so, room look like? A, a lot of NFC championships, <laughs> too. <laughs> um, you, you can't tell me that the Chiefs were a better team than the Niners last year. They yes, I can. I actually have. I, it's, it's in print. It's in the NFL well, record book. Did. They won the game. But talent-wise, you put the Niners roster next no, to... No, I, I think the Chiefs roster is underrated because they had so many good young defensive players that you just don't understand how good... I mean, the, the corners, the, the none of the Niner corners could have started for Kansas well, we, City. You ranked the top 10 players in that game, and I thought it was 6-4 Niners, right? Yeah, but there's a difference. Mahomes against Purdy kind of weights it in I Kansas City. You had and, all, in top 10. and also Andy Reid against Shanahan in big games. Andy Reid's been a better coach than Shanahan in big games. That's not disputable. Recently. And, well, Andy Reid went through go, a Shanahan type deal in with his the prime, go ask Bill Belichick who he couldn't beat consistently. Andy Reid. Andy was doing it with B mm. quarterbacks and he had Brady. Andy Reid gave Belichick troubles when Belichick owned the NFL. Go back to that soup. Wasn't Andy Reid the coach of that Super Bowl with T.O. playing with a broken leg? Remember that Super I, Bowl? I think it, so. That's yeah. way back, man. Yeah, I mean, you go, they, they always play. Andy and Belichick were in battles for years, but the NFL was more favorable toward defense back then mm. because the grabbing, once the NFL pivoted to an offensive league, Reed controls Belichick. Hmm. Um, there are last dance vibes around the Niners, right? Because you're going to have to pay Purdy. Well, I think Trent there's... Williams, I think 36 it, going on 37. No, I think this is the best they ever were was last year. I think they've plateaued. I think this year, and then I think next year, because Trent Williams has a, like a two- or three-year deal. But I think it's it's the thing that's worrisome. The last time Christian McCaffrey had this many touches, like last year, he was hurt for two years. So last year, he put up one of those Carolina years where he was like literally the entire offense. And he's hurt again. So, I mean, it, it's so funny. I've told the story about uh, Christian McCaffrey. I went to a UFC fight. I go to three or four UFC fights in the summer when I have time. And I go there and I take Ann, right, my wife. And we go to it and a bunch of people are coming up to me and Kyler Marine, a bunch of people. And Christian McCaffrey comes up. It's a dark room. It's That's a right. VIP, but it's dark. And he has a hat on. And he comes up to me and I'm a hi, hi. And, uh, and my wife, we go back to our seats. And about 10 minutes later, they show a picture of Christian McCaffrey on the big screen. My wife goes, you blew that guy off. And I was like, oh, my God, I got to find him. I did blow him. I didn't know who he was. My point, so I went back and found him. We laughed about it. My point being, Christian McCaffrey is not your classic NFL athlete who carries the ball 30 times. He's, he's a smaller athlete, so he can take the beating. But history shows when he does one of these heavy volume years and he's had two back to back for San Francisco he comes out of it banged up and and, and by the way I get Kyle Shanahan every time you give him the ball he's six yards I you, you fall in love with the guy so I think my take is this is a, a Christian this year to me is like a nine to ten game player which is fine as long as it's November 1st yeah. on that's that's what I would do do you remember how the Detroit Pistons at the end they had dominated Jordan for like two or three years yeah. And they went to the finals three years in a row. And then they ran out of gas. And the Bulls swept them off the court. Yeah. I, I'm not saying the Niners are feeling like those Pistons just yeah. at the end of a run, exhausted from all these playoff games, long seasons. But, man, the injuries are really mounting on this team. And I'm curious how Brandon Ayuk, who chirped and complained all year, got his contract. I mean, he's done nothing. Sirianni's play calling. Uh, bottom line is Falcons win the game with an awesome two-minute drive. Well, after the loss, Eagle safety Reed Blankenship pointed to Jalen Hurts' leadership in the locker room saying, Jalen led everything. No coach said a word. <laughs> it's a player-led team, and at the end of the day, we know what we did was on us. We made mistakes, offense and defense. It's going to take everybody. Mm -hmm. I would actually argue this isn't on the players. The coaching decisions were awful from Sirianni. Everybody who 
it has a whiff of analytics knows you kick field goals early in games and yeah. you go for it late. Yes. You don't kick to go up six yeah. with two minutes. That's just dumb football. Right. Um, so I, 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 this is not a good sign for Sirianni. Well, coming off the story in the offseason that Hurts and Sirianni were not close. Now, Brady and Belichick weren't either, but generally, as a rule, Offensive coaches are super close to their quarterbacks. I can't think of another example of it. it's not working. I mean, it's always that way. Unless you're unless you're getting rid of him and he knows it and you have a rough year at the end of a quarterback's career and the coach has to make a move. But even Andy Reid and Alex Smith at the end, Alex Smith is like, yeah, I'll mentor Mahomes. So, um, also strange. And again, I, I'm a Jalen Hurts guy. I believe in him. I think he's, he's a franchise super talented. He's definitely a top he, 10 quarterback. He was, the by the way, in that game, he got cooking in that game. He yeah. was playing really well. And he didn't have his big, deep weapon, A.J. Brown. Right. But, you know, my my uh, my old neighbor is a big Eagles fan, and yeah. he's sending me all these stories like, look, we're out on, on Jalen Hurts. A lot of the Philadelphia Eagles fan base has seen enough of Hurts, and they're starting to sour. And I, I don't get it. And then you read the articles, and the local media is starting to turn on Jalen Hurts in Philly. Uh, yeah, I don't think he's the problem. I, I don't either, but... <laughs> I guess people are just starting to doubt him a little bit. He was great. An MVP-level guy when he had a great coordinator. So was Matt Ryan. Okay, like, everybody benefits from a great coordinator. Look at Sam Darnold's benefit. Look at Jared Goff's career with McVay. Everybody benefits from coordinators. You don't think C.J. Stroud isn't benefiting from that hotshot young O.C. in Houston? Everybody does. So my take is, yes, Jalen proved when he has an O.C. he can be MVP of the league. Then they hired an OC that did not work whatsoever and didn't get any more job offers, like OC offers. He wasn't as good. Now it appears he's got a competent OC. Maybe not Shane Steichen, but a competent OC. Well, what's he done through two games? He's been very good. So when he had a great OC, he was great. When he has a competent OC, he's very good. And when he had a stinkeroo, he struggled. It just goes to show how, like, six plays in that game completely changed the narrative. If the Eagles run two times... And win this game, boom, Eagles 2-0, and looking good in the NFC. And it's that's like, right. oh, sky is well, that, falling for the Falcons. They got the Chiefs. That's what I said yesterday. There's a lot of positives. I would rather have the Chiefs roster. I would rather have the Eagles roster than the Falcons roster. 100%. 100%. Now, so it's, it, everything's good. And I also think now that New Orleans and Tampa look good, I'd rather play in the NFC East than the NFC South because New Orleans, New Orleans looks good. Absolutely for real. Well, and we know Tampa's got too many good players to stink. And that thing's humming. So, so you say New Orleans. Look look who Eagles play this week at New Orleans. That's a, gr- that is a great game. A week ago, okay, before the Saints dismembered Dallas and, and the Eagles uh, choked against the Falcons, the Eagles were favored on the road by three. It's now Saints by two and a half. Colin, I, I guess people are saying the Saints are real. They're going home. And short week for the Eagles, maybe no A.J. Brown again. Well, I think again. the Saints should be favored. Now, I, mean, I will let's say. Let's just toss the, toss the Panthers game out. Who cares? Yeah, they, okay. they destroyed Dallas. Do, but we came into the season, say, you said Dallas wasn't a playoff team. So who, why should we well, care? I, I said Dallas, I thought, was like a 9-10 win team. But I just, I thought they'd get edged out. I thought they'd be a good team. And they are a good team. Solid. I don't know. I, I, if I was an odds maker, I would have I would have made the Saints a slight favorite. Well, every time that that line hits th- Saints by three, money comes in on the Eagles because you're, you're giving well, me a what, field what on the road. Yeah, it's going to be a close football. I think it's going to be a very close. There's a lot game. of hard games this weekend. I don't know what to do with that. I know some people are saying, "Oh, Saints, Saints, Saints." Well, if it's two and a half, I think the Saints is the play. It is a short week for the Eagles. And you don't have a coaching edge either way. I, I just go back to this. It's just two weeks before week one, before the first game of the season, you looked at this and this was a win on the road for the Eagles, correct? And now based on eight quarters of football, no, 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 no. Saints got to be favored. So you Isn't like the Eagles. Isn't that an overreaction? You like the Eagles. I don't know if I'm not, I don't know if I'm willing to bet it, but I do kind of lean Eagles All right, there. All Let's right. go to the next one. <laughs> the 49ers oh, coming off that loss to the Vikings. Trying to bounce back against the depleted Rams. They are big favorites at SoFi this weekend. Well, Debo Samuel, he's going to miss the game with a calf strain. But he went on a podcast this week and was talking about the team's Super Bowl window. See, the now or never, like, right. that's how I kind of look at it. Like, with, with the guys that we have, like, we didn't, like, I'd have been a part of, you know, the, the best team in the NFL for the past, going on six years. Yeah. 
And so, like, we always there. Like, we 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 got to get it done. No, they had the best roster for six years. They have the best team. That's different. Roster and team are two different things. I